Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to those just arriving. I part. I apologize for the tardiness and us getting started, but um, so folks have asked, what's the format of our meeting tonight? First, let me introduce myself. My name is Cesar Garcia, and this is my first official meeting sitting on this side. Uh, thank you all that I've had a chance to meet, and for the warm welcome. For those that I haven't yet, you know, I look forward to getting a chance to work with you on uh, quite a few uh, of our city's opportunities moving forward. And I start off by saying opportunities because a lot of folks will call them issues or challenges. And to me, they're all opportunities, all right? Whether good, bad, ugly, or everything in between, the purpose of what we're trying to do is to move forward. And uh, in an effort for that, I appreciate it. I know it was short notice to announce it. I know that we may all have a lot of differences in how we view things, and that's fine. But I think collectively, we all want one thing, and that's for Lamarck to move forward. So for those that have asked for the forum, uh, for, for the format of how we're going to deal with tonight, I'll be very open and honest. It's your meeting. In no particular order, if there's, if you guys want to rock, paper, scissor, who got here first, this is my way to listen to what you guys have to say, because very often folks don't get a chance to have a format like this to express some of the things that they want. Now, I will tell you, we're up through very tough and challenging economic times not just because of rollback or we're, we're, we're facing a tough economy and i think we're all facing that in our homes when we go to our gas pumps when we go to the grocery store i think we're all facing it so we're not going to solve everything tonight but i'd like to at least hear from your perspective because too many folks in, in the community have come to me or voiced to me and said we never get a chance to really voice what we want and that's the purpose of this meeting tonight and our on our next one that we're going to have the 21st it's not custom most cities don't open themselves up and make themselves this vulnerable to be a target and sit here and say, well, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. All I ask is understand that under this group that we've been together, it's only been for a short while and that we're not gonna fix it all tonight, but I'm hoping to listen and take the steps we need to get there. Cause that's the only real way that we're gonna make progress. And it's gonna take all of us, all right? It really is gonna take all of us. So that being said, tonight's about you guys. Tell me about some of the issues that we have. Tell me about some of the things that you've seen. I met with a resident earlier who could not make it tonight. And I think I see, I'm not sure if I see Rick on here, but it was about a public works issue. Um, she voiced her concern. She thought that it was in the plans already to be taken care of. Um, and the city itself addressed two thirds of the issue because that's all that was approved for funding. She thought that all of it had been approved. We had to re-educate, redirect and say, look, here's the evidence and here's what we did. And she was like, well, great. How do we fix the rest of it? We've now added that item as a request to be submitted into this next year's budget. It's a drainage issue. And any city has the same issues. Drainage, water, right? Lights, crime, activities, programming, special events, parks, all the above, right? I'm not naive to that, but I wanna hear what makes each and, each and every single one of your concerns special and what we can do to address those. So that being said, in no particular order, I'm done talking. I, I'd, I'd be remiss, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Campion here, if there's anything you'd like to say before we get started, or if you're in the same boat I am, or we just wanna listen. Uh, Mayor Bell is also uh, just here. He's next door, he'll be here shortly. Uh, and I believe that's the only two council members that we have attending. That being said, I'm ready to listen. Mayor, uh, help me. I just, just to clarify, where the focus is the announcement on budget budget issues, correct? It's and and that's what I understand that this forum is at, because we had requested at last year's. Let's begin the budget process earlier. Let's get community involved. Let's listen to concerns in terms of needs and see what how we can fit uh, what we have in terms of addressing those particular needs. And that's that's what I understood. And it was my review of those meetings that prompted this as our kickoff so we can start as early as possible. I'd be remiss to not show some of the staff that's uh, listening in via Zoom. I see uh, Ms. Kathleen from Code Enforcement, Ms. Susie, our, our budget director, uh, JB, our, our, our public's information, and also Chief Aragon, who is our police chief. That being said, this is your forum. This is this is this is your time to come and speak to that. 
If there's any questions about our taxes and everything else, mayor is holding his tax form immediately afterwards. We can address that. But right now, what are your budget concerns? What are your budget questions? What are your budget requests? And I'm looking at a bunch of perplexed faces out there. I feel like you've never been asked what you wanted before. Well, guys, get used to it. All right, we're all in this together. So I'm gonna ask y'all to be part of the solution, but I can't, we can't figure what out those things are if you don't point those things out to me and to all of us so we can start addressing them and adding them to the budget. Please come forward. I'm Jerry Payne John. Uh, one thing that I would really like to see done, and it's, I've lived here for 14 years, is when can we expect Bayou to be improved? Plus, Boshe over by the high school, that thing has been a death trap for years and years. Nothing's changed on it. You know, we, we I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, we did Cedar. And that looks fantastic. Mr. Petty John, one quick question. Sir Kyle, this is being recorded yeah. in case I can't. I'm asking because if I can't keep up with my handwriting, sure, sure. I'd rather listen to you and then come back yeah. and listen to it later for the notes. But what, what, what I was uh, addressing was Bayou. I mean, that, you know, down by the police station, that whole, whole all of Bayou is just, it's terrible. And, you, and by Bayou, you mean the streets yes. themselves? Yes. like the, the street. Okay. And Boche over by the high school. You know, uh, used to, there was buses, and I'm sure there's still buses that go up and down that, not nearly as much now, but the buses and the traffic and the, I mean, that, that street is just needed lots and lots of work for a long, long time. So, Mr. Pettitjohn, my understanding is your main concern is streets and specifically Bayou and Vaucher. Particularly, yes. But I'm sure other residents, as I'm seeing folks nodding, there's other streets that might need addressing as well. And this is how we get consensus. I, again, for those that can't view from that are watching from home, but I'm getting a lot of nodding heads. So we should probably address some of our attention towards streets. Yes. And maintaining our streets. Exactly. Mr. Pettijohn, I don't know if you've met Mr. Rick and Rick is here. He, he's, he's coming up to the dais here. Um, actually, for, for the sake of time, Rick, if you don't mind, if you want to just meet with Ms. Mr. Pettijohn, make sure we have his phone number. Okay. Because I want to make sure for the sake of everybody having a chance to speak, Rick, as you may or may not know, is our public works director. No. So again, we're all rather new working together, but um, Rick and, and staff and, and, and his team and, 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 and our offices have been working on a plan of proposing streets maintenance, but it's good to hear it's not just us proposing it, that it is a desire of the city. And by the number of nodding heads that I'm seeing out there, that's a concern. Because at our next meeting, hopefully y'all will be able to attend and bring your neighbors out as well. My next step is going to be is, well, let's prioritize streets over whatever else the net other issues are. So we can now say, right, we're going to try to allocate this much per year, because we're not going to get all the streets sure. done at Absolutely. the same time. But what are the priorities? Is it the main roads? Is it whatever this case may be? Yeah, I, I know they've done a little patching on Bayou and Boche right. over the years, but it's been... It's time. Yeah. It's, it's time. time. It's time. Duly and noted. Rick, if you don't mind getting Mr. Pettijohn's information, and if you could also, if there's any of those streets that are already on our plans, I know we have a few that are coming up. If any of those streets are part of that plan, if you could share that, and then we can provide an update at our next uh, meeting as well. Uh, so, so as a follow-up, we can provide some, 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 some planning that we've done for that. Now, I also, I'm on the Keep the Mark Beautiful Commission. Okay. And I believe that we did present some possible street signs. We have some, we, we're budgeting, we're, we're planning on doing some of those with the appro approval of the council, uh, some new street signs. One of the biggest complaints is our street signs are very, most of them are very, very uh, old, faded, unreadable, and that kind of thing. And certainly we have some money to, to do that with, but that's something that at some point, city council will have to be considering is street signs. Uh, if you've noticed, one of the things we really noticed, if you've been over to Hitchcock lately, and what we're, what we're trying, really talking about doing in, in, in the Keep the Mark Beautiful Commission was to kind of try to do the main thoroughfares, kind of like Hitchcock did. And if you go down 519, they're bright red, look new and crisp and look great. And so that's one thing that we really want to, to help with. 
but we're also know, we also know we're going to have to have the city council approve it. And uh, I don't were you here for that meeting when we presented the signs? I was here for the last meeting. Okay. I did see the designs. I know that our code enforcement was working together with Public Works to make sure that the signs that we answered all the questions need to be so we can bring that uh, next to council at a future meeting in the near future okay. so we can try to get that in motion. But in conjunction with that, it's not just the approval of the signs, but identifying the streets we were going to do. So along with what you're saying, maybe the main thoroughs. Uh, yes. And I do know, I, I see Ms. Kathleen on, 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 on the Zoom and, and Rick, obviously, for us to have that information as to what those are, because we may not be able to do it all exactly. in the first year, but having a phase plan to say is, all right, we approved this one. This is what we're going to go with. This is our identity. This is what we're going to do moving forward. Great. And then here's our major streets that we're going to identify. And our plan of attack is we're going to do all tier one streets in year one. And then we're going to hear, and please, I'm not calling some streets more important than others, but as they're identified, yeah. what streets are considered our major thoroughs, we'll do those. Yeah. We'll, 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 and also as money allows, right? We'll, we'll put those as phase one. And then the next ones will be phase two. And how many phases we have to have? But until we get that, you know, all the credit um, taken care of. Yeah, and uh, now this is no, and one other thing that I would really like to address is house numbers on the uh, all over the city. They're they are very often not visible. Uh, I, as you drive around, you 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 just don't see the house numbers on houses, and that I know that is a a concern, uh, safety concern because if the firemen or the police can't see the house number. Um, but that's something I really think that would be helpful for everyone is, is to see the house, you know, visible house numbers. Uh, and I know that I have a friend that has a rent house and he had some issues. They took it down to paint and he got sided. And, but there's a ton of homes here that do not have house numbers or are not visible. Just little things like that. So, so let me say this, Mr. Mr. John, uh, certainly uh, streets are a vital, vital part of our infrastructure, uh, and they most certainly need to be addressed. Um, I think that we have to keep in mind, and this is for, I, I know that you know this, but for all of us, the average street, for it to be completely redone, is roughly about a million dollars, right? So I want us to be clear on what that looks like. One street, the average, when you go back down to the base, and rebuild it up costs about a million dollars. Uh, and these are the things that we're trying to share with our, our community. A million dollars out of a $13.5 million budget. Uh, and so that's the heartburn and the strain that our budget is under. And I know you know this because you've certainly, you're aware of it, but I don't know that all of our community members know that streets are very, very expensive. And so it's important for us, uh, I'm, I'm sure Cesar has tackled this, if not, he will, uh, to really be thoughtful in a street uh, repair and, and a maintenance program. And I think that's kind of what you're alluding to. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's also um, being creative in how we approach different things. Uh, I know that our city engineer is not on the call, but our public works uh, director is in the back of the room. We had a meeting today, coincidentally, with TechStock. We brought some of those ideas to mind of how we can maybe address some of those things. But it's going to take us being creative. It's going to it, it depends. Do we want to do it at $1 million a year for the next 20 years to fix our roads? And in 20 years, we have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And that only takes care of 20 of the roads. Or do we, we all, when it comes to certain things, we all become kids again, right? We all want what we want, we sure. want it now. And I respect, <clears throat> having said that, what mechanism are we gonna use to get there? Where I've challenged staff is to now identify any possible ways to get that done, which is what today was that meeting was about. We can maybe start doing some of them through our partnership with TechSoc, or at least approach that possibility where we haven't done in the past. Um, there's also maybe some grant funds that we could approach that we may not directly affect streets, but it'll pay for a portion of what we're doing. And I, I know Rick's in the back of the room. I know staff that is here and listening knows that they, they've heard me say that till I'm blue in the face. 
we're going to be aggressive when it comes to that, but we're going to need you all continued support. So when, for example, we ask for a letter of support from residents as to why they need it, in this sense, and all those that are here present tonight, I know that if we call on you and say, hey, listen, we're applying for this funding opportunity, we've identified this many dollars, it's this much of a match that we put into the annual budget to serve when we go after these dollars, can we count your support in the form of a support letter, please tell us why. And then we submit that as our package, it strengthens our package when we submit it. And then that's, that's just one, and that's true for parks, that's true for any other entity that we can really pursue that, 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 that option. And I would like to say, because because of you, Mayor Bell, I looked at the city of Dickinson budget, and you know, their budget's about $21 million. And let me tell you, they have streets in Dickinson that are <laughs> by far worse than any street in Lamar. Yes, they it do. is, it's shameful. True story. That they have some of the streets <laughs> in the condition that they have. So like I say, it, you know, we have some that need work, but we don't have anything like a few of those streets over there. And their, their, their budget, Terry, is 21 million. I've been saying 20, so it's about $21 million. They have about 21,000 residents and they, they don't have a paid fire department. Our budget is $13.5 million. We have 19,000 people and we have a paid fire department. The best fire department in the state, nothing against them. But the fact is there is another expense that, that we have to we have to navigate. And so their budget is bigger than ours. And they so have the less worse. Right. <laughs> and the streets are so so everything's relative when we start to compare uh, cities amongst one another. Uh, we have to compare population, city size, geographical, how many city, how many citizens per square mile because all of those things factor into services, right? Absolutely. And all of those things factor into how our budget is crafted, if, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. The city of Hitchcock's uh, tax rate, I think is 53 cent, but I think they, they have 60 square miles, uh, but they only have what, six or seven some odd thousand residents, which means their residents per square mile is, is uh, significantly less, which means that their services uh, can be less because their area is not as densely populated. And so these are the things in budget forums and tax forums and these types of discussions, these are the things that we need to clearly delineate because these are the things that are important for us as we decide how we want to move forward as a city. And so I thank you for bringing that up because that's an important part. And I just want to mention one other thing. I know you probably won't hear in uh during Hurricane Harvey, but there was uh, where Moran and, and over by West Long, all that area flooded during that thing. Mm -hmm. And of course it, it relates to Boucher also, but that almost, I would say 70 or 80% of those houses flooded over there. And I know it was a very difficult event, but there was an awful lot of flooding over there. So, so drainage. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's a very, important part that you said because and i'm going down the list of things and not including the well, i guess if you talk about the house numbers you mentioned that's a public safety issue yeah. um street signs not only is that a beautification thing but also could be public safety to make sure that our site signs are visible for us and for our visitors or anybody yes. that's here that's that's on the road and you talked about our streets and you talk about our drainage in the realm of things and how we prioritize that and then thus how we allocate dollars to each one of those things is arbitrary to, you know, how the needs are. We don't worry about drainage until we need it, yeah, right? Exactly. And that's one of the things that we need to address because that's what becomes much more pointed at those times. We have to prepare for that rainy day. Yeah. Um, just like no one thinks about their wastewater until we have a backup. Exactly. And then all of a sudden we're getting all the phone calls and we're flooded with it because of that happening. And there's a trickle effect to that. Um, and that's the balancing act that we as city staff have to address. And uh, I, I know our, our, our public works and our engineering department is working hard on that to make sure we come up with a plan. We're gonna need your all support to put the plan into fruition and um, so we can address those needs. Well, great, great list. And as you're saying, you can't see the audience behind you, but a lot of things you're saying, I'm also watching you, but I'm also watching them kind of sit, 
yes and or, or some some folks are kind of like well yeah you know, you know i didn't think of that like, i'm the wilding of, i didn't think of that but yeah that, that's that's a good point we want more of that now i know there's some of you that may want to echo some of the things from mr Petterton. was there anything else that you have no that's good. is there anything else that mr Petterton may have touched on that anybody in the audience would like to add to or you want to bring something different up you're, you're, you're called uh, just want to uh get back in on what the, the 10.5 which is the budget you know, I, as a citizen, I, oh, Kenny, I'm so sorry. Could you, do you mind coming up? Because myself and the, the audience members would like to hear. Just following up about uh, what uh, Mr. Mayor was saying about the budget, 13.5, and we do we do compare it with the Dickinson and other cities. But uh, I, I come like uh, uh, Councillor Joe to come to uh, to a meeting called pre-budgeting to know exactly, as a citizen of uh, Lamarck living here at 20 years to know some numbers and to see where the money coming from and how the money will allocate it here and there you know, to be able to understand uh, what's going on in the city and help to be able to help in, in, the, in the future, as you said, if you listen, we will speak. If, you, if you're not listening, we will not speak. And this is, this is your first meeting and this is our first meeting to be uh, invited to, uh, to somebody is gonna be listening, you know, for example, or address the issues. So I would like to come today, you know, I would like to hear uh, where, the come, where the money come from, how much percentage come from this and this, and uh, where they allocated. If each street costs a million dollars, then we are out of luck, you know, with 13.5, you know, I mean, what, what are you talking about? Certainly. There is not just only 13 uh, street in uh, Lamar. This is a huge city. This is a strong city. This is a um, city that deserve, deserve some, uh, some money, deserve some issues to be solved and 13.5 probably is not. So uh, to be able to be on your side and understand what's going on, you know, uh, then we need to see some numbers. Uh, is it uh, find it available on, on, uh, on the website, find it available here, you know, around, you know, given the balance sheet, given, given, given the, some, some kind of uh, statements uh, to find out exactly how much come from the property tax, how much come from donation, how much they come from the sales tax, how much, this and that coming, you know, so to be able to understand everything. Absolutely. So, um, so Mr. Nofall, every every year and including this year, we have we have budget workshops in the summer. This year we had five budget workshops, uh, and in those budget workshops, the council as the rest as well as the rest of the community, whoever wanted to show up, many many of our citizens did show up. Uh, we went line by line. We looked at what every uh, financial resource came from, uh, whether it be maintenance and operation, property tax, sales tax. Uh, and we also looked at every expenditure through those five budget workshops in the summer. Uh, and we had also two budget hearings, and which meant that any person in our community could come up and say, this is what I want or don't want in our budget, right? So that normally happens in the summer, uh, but the budget uh, is a matter of public record, and you can request that. Um, and also, uh, financial reports are matters of public record, uh, and you can request those. And so you can see wherever spending is occurring, you can see the flow, the pace, you know, the different items that, that we are, are spending monies on. And so all of that's available to you. Now, let me say this to you really quickly. Um, we have a $13.5 million budget. Uh, we have the maintenance and operations side of our budget very quickly, just a quick tutorial. The maintenance and operations side of our budget is what supplies uh, the majority of our budget and that's property tax, right? That's sales tax, that's fines and forfeitures, uh, that's permit fees and things of that nature. So think of your house, you pay taxes. Think of going to the Walmart, you purchase items, you pay taxes, right? Think of uh, getting your sidewalk redone or your driveway redone. You need a permit. You pay for that. You pay the permit fee, right? Uh, these coin-operated game rooms, they pay permit fees as well. You speed, you get cited, you pay your ticket. That's called a fine. All of these things go into the maintenance and operation side of our budget. And this is the part of our budget that handles the day-to-day, -day, the annual expenditures, the stuff that happens over and over and over again. It pays Kyle's salary, it pays Cesar's salary, uh, it pays for the lights in this building, right? Uh, and then you have the enterprise fund. And this is where folks get confused. You have the enterprise fund. 
the enterprise fund is primarily and solely in our city organization because it is the fund that we use to pay for our water. We buy water from the Brazos River. We buy it once a year. We pay millions of dollars for it. And then it's dispersed. And based on what you use, you pay into a portion of that. And what Cesar uses, he pays into a portion of that. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. So that's where our water bills go. And they pay for the water that we purchase. But not only that, right? They also pay for the men and women that are there to maintain our water and our sewer, right? Our wastewater and our ditches because all of that is city infrastructure and all of that can be paid for legally, legally out of our enterprise fund. Does that make sense to you so far? Okay, so now there's a third part of our budget and this is the debt service part of our budget. And this is where we buy things, fire trucks, if you will, city buildings, building a new fire station, all of these streets, drainage, all of these major one-time capital improvement projects, they come out of the debt service part of our budget. It's there simply for us to pay debt, right? So those are basically the three parts of our budget. The maintenance and operations part is 70, Mr. Nofall, 70% salary, 70% of that entire budget is salary. I believe it's 60 plus percent of that budget is public safety centric, police and fire. Occasion, every annually, every budget, we usually have about 250, 200 to $250,000 out of 13 some odd million dollars that we can actually disperse in ways that we feel the public is asking us to. Out of $13.5 million, we really only have a couple of hundred thousand in discretionary spending because the rest of it is already tied up in salaries and operations. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I did uh, I understand that you have to request this information to be able, you know, to look at it. But what's the, the issue of make it like public? You know, I mean, we are discussing right now coming it's public pre budget <laughs> and about the five meeting. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I, I'm guilty, my, my, I might be guilty, but I'm not a very big fan of Facebook. You know, I sometimes I did look, you know, and uh, if it come a notification about my city, a new mayor, a new uh, city manager, a new councilor. All. So I might, I might catch that meeting and I might not catch that meeting. You sure. Know? And I am one of those people who is really uh, interested to know what's going on in the city. Right, uh, but for for some reason, I all the time get uh, the advertisement uh, late after it finish, and uh, I don't know. Am I am I the only one who do feel that way? I asked my wife, and my wife she said the same thing. You know that she get the meeting uh, time is uh, late. You know, so uh, I, I'm sure that the city of Lamarck has all uh, all our telephone numbers, and they could you know use text message. You know, we in in, in fast paced. Uh, uh, world right now and uh, uh, that Facebook is not uh, popular for everybody. Sure. So uh, and I personally try to avoid to come to city of Lamarck, not because the people of Lamarck, uh, city of Lamarck is not uh, uh, responding to me or not. I just try to avoid any uh, government. <laughs> I just do my business, yes, you know, sir. because, I, you know, so I want to I want to know what's going on in my my city, but I don't want to be coming every day and check the 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 TV their TV or the meeting uh, dashboard. So uh, I would like to see you know a different kind of uh, uh, tool you know to get the people involved uh, with the the knowledge of the 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 numbers and the the knowledge of the meeting before you know ahead of time. I mean, if you're telling me tomorrow, uh, well, we're going to have another discussion of the uh, of the budget, I might not be able to manage to come tomorrow right away. But mm -hmm. if you give me a, a week ahead of the time, then I probably will be able to manage to come. If it's not mine, uh, get somebody, you know, or we talk about it. I mean, yes. if it's not me, maybe maybe one of my friends, you know, in the meeting, then I will ask him or 
ask her and say, hey, what's happening, you know, in the meeting, and then we'll discuss, we talk about it. So I would appreciate that if you take that in consideration. Quickly, um, go ahead, I'm sorry, say so. I, I wanted to make sure, I see Jennifer, Rick, if you guys don't mind, whoever can, please give Mr. Snowfall's number so we can follow up, because all your points have been duly noted. I, my understanding is you'd like for there to be a clear, better announced information on the budget process. And coincidentally, today's Tuesday, right? Yesterday and over the weekend, we discussed other formats of how we can start introducing different ways. And Susie's on the uh, on the call as well, who is our finance uh, director. Different ways we can better educate folks on that. So we're already working on it, but it's it's great to hear you say that to validate what we're already working on. Uh, um, um, like in the background, and I heard you say text blast. Um, you've essentially, I, I paraphrase what you said to say, how can we better educate residents on how our budget works? Yeah. Um, and making sure that the budget and all our financials are clearly shown on our web, which they are, but maybe we can tweak that and make it even better. Yeah. Instead of requested, you know, just, just leave it available because well, I, I, I think, you know, um, I was, uh, you know, searching sometimes for little information about uh, um, the financial statements for some of the cities. And I seen some and some, some not. I mean, as a citizen of uh, the mark living here 20 years and more, you know, I, I think I'm entitled to get to this information. Well, let that. You have my number. I'm. Uh, you have my numbers. You have my name. You have my address. So, uh, I mean, if it's if it's not available for everyone in the whole county, just make it available for those citizens living in the mark. Understood. Well, I, I think we. Enough. I think the the the, the Mr. Nofal, the, the point is that we we do that. We do now. Um, what I think uh, I'm hearing you say that 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 you would like us to do more of is the CTY program. And that's the program where you get the phone call and and you answer the phone and there's a reminder, right? That that that's a great that's a great tool because you're saying text message. We're talking about reaching your phone. Great tool. The budget, as far as the budget goes, the reason why we don't just give the budget, pass the budget out to whoever wants the budget is because the budget is, has pages to it. And those pages, they're, they're copies, and you have to pay for those copies, mm -hmm. right? And so what we do and what every city does, that, to my knowledge, maybe not every city, but the majority of them do, is when you're requesting things from an open records request, the, those cities now are charging you for those copies because there are people that, that request thousands, tens of thousands of pages of documents, right? Uh, and so those can be burdens on the city. Can you imagine if I requested you, Cesar, Kyle, tens of thousands of pieces of information, then your tax dollars are going to somebody else's copies, right? So that's the reason why there aren't just tangible physical budgets all over and because they cost. I understand. And I yeah. understand what uh, the cost and how much it's going to cost the citizen of Lamar for that. But it's not. I'm not saying that uh, uh, hard copy, and you have to give a print out. You know, okay. to everybody. Um, it's like right now we are. We are a TV. You know, we could. You could put the budget for us right now, and we could look and see what's the allocation of. I got you. I got you now. I got what you're trying to say I'm now. Not, I got not, you. I, I'm yeah. with you. I'm I got flexible. You. I'm not trying to. I'm just, you know, get the idea to you that yeah. if it's possible. And I got what you're saying. You're talking about in a real time yeah, setting. Yes. I got you. That but makes if sense. If it I comes between what you're saying and, uh, you, but but just to, to remind everyone that not everyone is citizen of Lamarck uh, uh, interesting to know the budget. There's a few <laughs> people. It's like the one who ruled this great country. It's a 20%. So the 20% who is interested in what you're saying yeah. but then the same thing i'm uh, flexible i'm not saying that hard copy print out i'm just saying you know in the tv on the on the computer you search it fine put and, it on so we can and it's been duly it. noted and i can tell you that we have it available we'll just make sure that we're that you're connected because mayor mentioned cty and and uh, kyle up here just showed me i see jennifer out in the stand saying we just got to make sure that you're connected in that sense because you said phone numbers and although we may have them we also need people's permission to add you to these services to get this information. So it's been duly noted. I know somebody, we're going to make sure we get your phone number. We'll follow, make sure we have your email and we'll add you to it. And anybody else out there who would like to be added, please make sure you share that information before you leave with staff 
because we need your permission to opt you in, obviously. Otherwise, we can't just spam you with text and, and yeah, text emails. Sure. And if you allow us to, obviously, you give us your email address because you're allowing that to occur. Well, no and uh, we'll continue doing that. Yeah. And, and I appreciate right. you bringing that to our attention. Yes, sir. Oh, sir, I, I just... Got the, my friend, just two, two quick things. There's... Let me stay or I can go. No, just stay right there. Oh. The, as part of this process, there's a second meeting. And what is the date of that second meeting? Thursday, the, the 21st, 21st at 6 Thurs p.m. We Thursday, did one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. So I don't want to make sure that you know now ahead that there's a second meeting on Tuesday, the 21st at 6 p.m. here again. So if you can make it and and give you an idea to 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 think a little bit more about some of the things that you've heard from, from others. I, I and am. then the second thing for me here, the reason I'm here is I'm here not to defend us for anything, but just to listen, right? And take my notes and let, let you guys talk. Well, um, I do appreciate that. And I do understand the, the city manager when he said that he, he here to listen. But I, I for, I'm for some reason, I'm here to listen. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I just thought that I want to come and see some numbers. And, 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 and you know what? Now, know, you know, now we but, know. But now. you see, but you see, you want to listen, I want to listen. Yeah. There's something in yeah. the middle is missing. Let's bridge that. Let's bridge How can that. we bridge that? That is what I'm, yeah. And that's, that's, I'm not saying that it's your responsibility, Joe, and I know you, and you are a very good man, and I know the mayor, and I, it's my pleasure to meet all of you, you know, for that. But in the same thing, you know, that's what it is. The tension is good. Yes. The real, the, you know, I, I meet a lot of people in Lamarck uh, City where, within this 20 years uh, living here. And I see them, everybody wants to know, but how, wants to help. But how are we gonna help if- If you don't know. If we don't yeah. know, mm -hmm. or that information is difficult. One time, you know, I went to the meeting somewhere, you know, with the, with the mayor, Bill, uh, and he was saying a good thing, you know, that uh, let's, let's approach the police and know them. So we are, I'm here, you know, to approach you and know you. That's but then I, I'm not gonna sit here and know you on the Facebook and, Gonna every time you have a birthday or every time you know you have something, I have to, uh, I have to, uh, to. I'm here, you know, really, really. I'm here to listen budget. I, I'm gonna be disappointed if I don't hear what is some some numbers. But I'm not that. I'm not against you know who's listening to mm -hmm. the Facebook or other things. But each one has different yeah way to help his city or her city, and I am here to. I could, I could, you know, be getting involved in this aspect, okay, but I can't be involved in other aspect. Maybe the wife, maybe the kids. Yeah. You know, I have, I have five kids. They could, you could, yeah. you could have them. They are volunteer <laughs> to do. <laughs> not have them, you know, as far as uh, no, not have, but they are, they are, and they're not in the budget. They're, they're not in the budget. Yeah. They go, they, they, my kids, they go, and I appreciate uh, everybody. You know, I know what's yeah. going on in the city, and. I seen my kids uh, with I this know. picture or with that, yeah. uh, you know, but my kids go to Webster. <laughs> yeah. They go to food bank over their hill. Yes, my, kids, yes. my kids go to, to, uh, to Clear Lake, yes. you know, to help. Yeah. While, while this city, you know, may, may need mm -hmm. them and deserve mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And I just want to end with one thing, and if everybody allow me. My daughter, you know, and she's right now uh, studying uh, uh, medical uh, uh, in, in University of Houston. Uh, one time, remind she said, "Daddy, I don't want to move from Lamarck City uh, tech, uh, ISD. I want to stay in in the city here, and I want to raise up the standard of the city of Lamarck. Mm -hmm. I don't want to move. I can, but I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, she could go to the, any other uh, district, uh, but she said, "No, I have obligation to the city, and that's what we want you to, to know that we do have obligation to the city. And I am sure there is plenty of people they do have obligation uh, more than me or." Same as me, but in the different way they could help, and that's what that's management is about to get all that efforts and put them together as a puzzle, and it will make sense to me and to you and to everybody else, and we will be team teaming up. It's like you guys doing same as as that teaming up. You might have an expert in something. He might have an expert in something. You might have an expert in something, and that's what yes, how it is go. That is commendable. And uh, kudos to you, because obviously you're doing something right as a parent that your daughter would feel that way. I did, I did see a hand in the back, but before you, 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 you leave, it's been duly noted what you said. And the intention of this was not to bring numbers now. 
the intention was to listen in these two workshops and then commence when we commence our budget process, mm -hmm. then start sharing those numbers. Unless we want to change that format, I just want to make sure we gave a format to where folks like yourself and all those that are here in attendance to say anything that they may want that have that opportunity to do so. So I've also noted, I'm sure you guys know the same, that if we ever have a, a need for somebody for a budget, uh, uh, committee. We can use his daughters. Well, no, we could use uh, him yeah. and his daughters. <laughs> the, daughter, the daughter is medical too. Yeah. She could go to the fire department and help yeah. over there. She did. She did. Board. She did. And I have two boys right now. They're ready to go at work. One, yeah. one, one, he wants to be a doctor. Uh, Look at that. Animal doctor and the other one. And As uh, that children is, who can volunteer. Yeah. Their teacher yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was their teacher. They're yeah, absolutely and, amazing. So we are willing. We are willing to listen like you. You know, are willing. But thank you. Made the bridge, you know? Thank you for your heart and oh, your family's you, heart, Mr. Nofa. Yeah, all my respect. That is awesome. And please help us continue to educate folks yeah. because that sharing of information like that, we can't opt them in. Like, like Mr. Snowfall said, we have his number. We have everybody's number, but we don't have the right to opt anybody in without their permission. But if you in turn say, hey, please add me to the CTY or to your text blast or to whatever format we have to get information out, then we'll have that permission to do so. So thank you. Anyone else? I see a lot of folks here. There's no rhyme or reason. If anybody would like to say anything, this is your opportunity to do so. I know we're, we're coming up on time, but I don't want, I mean, if, if so many of you are here. Mr. Osteen. James Osteen, live at 2012 Giordano and Lamarck. Keith, Mayor Bell, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the hard questions. Yes, always sir. Have. Yes, sir. I'd like to know what y'all going to do with the 48 million, I believe is what it's, I've heard it is, that we've got in grant money. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, if you'll okay. tell us tonight, you know, what that money can be spent on. Okay. And what it can't be spent on. Okay. And my next one is uh, the certificate of obligation that y'all mentioned that you were going to pass at the last council meeting. Mm -hmm. I want to get Susie involved in this because she is the finance director. Okay. And what I'd like to know, and make no mistake, we need a new police department and I'm for it 100%, mm -hmm. but I'm not for bankrupting the city. Sure. Okay. Tell us how y'all going to pay for that. What your plan is, how you going to pay for that certificate obligation. Sure. Okay. The citizens need to know how we're going to finance it. If sure. it's going to put us in a financial bind. Sure. And I'd like for Susie to chime in on that because right. she's, a, you know, she's, Susie, is she, she's aware she is, of that. She's ready. She is on, but we're, we're more taking information that we prepare. Uh, okay. We'll have that for us at the next meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and it'll be available after anybody else who wasn't able to speak today. Okay. I understand we've got, uh, when I was looking at the budget, we have about 12 million in reserve. Tell us what that's going to be. You know, I, I know, I know most of it. But yeah. They don't. Okay. Yeah. You know, we need to know about the 12 million reserve, how y'all going to spend that and how much we got to leave dedicated to operate the city for 90 days. Mm -hmm. This rollback election is coming up. If this rollback election is successful, tell me what the consequence is going to be. Okay. And then tell me why does the city need to keep the tax rate the same? I know we need the money, so it's not an issue with me, okay. but it is with a bunch of people that I've talked to. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Let me stay there. Yeah, I was going to say, you, 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 you yeah, I'm going to give you, these, and we don't want to take away from anybody else that wants to speak, but some of these we can address right away. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me address these really, really, really quickly. See if I can get us where we need to go. The forty-eight point nine million dollars is a GLO grant. How much? Forty-eight is forty-eight point nine million dollars. It's a GLO grant and it is specifically earmarked. For those of you that are out, out in, in the world, when you apply for a grant, you have to say what you are using those monies on. And the federal government will hold your feet to the fire to make sure you use those monies on what you say. 
So $48.9 million is primarily uh, an expansion of our wastewater treatment plant. It's we're going to double in size uh, because the western parts of our city has grown. And so we need to be able to process more waste, right? More sewer. We got more houses, more toilets being flushed. Uh, but it also is going to help uh, upgrade about 21 lift stations, give them the capacity, the, the, the power to be able to, to move sewer better and more efficiently. That's not happening now. Also, it's going to be uh, earmarked to replace and repair many of our main infrastructure lines, our sewer lines. Remember, the water lines aren't being touched by $48.9 million. The drainage is not being touched by $48.9 million. This grant was a federal grant awarded to us primarily for sewer rehab, 48.9. 7.5 million also awarded to us for to replace manholes. I believe there were 60-ish uh, somewhere in that, that area. Manholes are a part of our sewer system. So that's, that's another 7.5. One point, I believe, two to 1.4 is Marion Melody Lane. That's a drainage project that is scheduled to commence once the, uh, the uh, inspections are done to make sure that those areas uh, the soil testing and things come out appropriately. Um, I believe those are all the grants that, that I can think of right now. If there are more, just mention it to me. I'll you know, run them off. Okay, to let you... before, we get on, before we get off that, okay. uh, who's going to be watching all this money? May the, I... the, let me, let me, let me let, you want to go? You want to go first? No, go, go ahead. The, the thing is this, the GLO, here's what people don't understand. While we, while, you know, while we may want to be skeptical, the federal government, is hyper-focused on every dollar that they expend. The reason why we got awarded, watch this very quickly. We got awarded with this grant in, I believe it was March-ish, April-ish of 2021. Councilman Osteen, do you realize that there won't be any work done in our city until January of 2023? That. That's over a year and a half. The federal government will not allow one dollar to fall through any cracks. The, uh, the, the grant administrator of this $48.9 million, I think we have two of them. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Den Ho. He's at a co. He was here with the last administration. The other one, I believe, is Grant Works, and they were brought here by the last administration, right? And so these are the two grant administrators. These folks go out and work with Susie to get bids and get companies and, and do plans. The council doesn't do any of that. We don't, we, we, we don't go anywhere near those monies other than to validate the work of the federal government and Cesar Garcia and his staff. That's all we do is raise our hand. I'm not attacking you. I know I'm you're on, not. I was on council. So I'm being, I, I know, I'm being crystal. And, and I'm speaking through you to them so that they can know how grant how these grants work. So deal. say so. I'm sorry. You wanted to say something. I, I, I just wanted to say something else to kind of piggyback off of that. Um, as we all know, in the few dealings that we all have individually with, with federal in any capacity, um, they're very serious about their money, right? Um, and I'll say this further, I owe this not only to all the staff that we lead here, you ask who's gonna be in charge of that, it's all gonna fall on me and all of our staff. So I wanna own that head on um, to, to answer that question. Um, so the buck stops with you. Fortunately or unfortunately, and I'll add to that to say, um, although I like um, the color orange, I don't, I don't prefer to be wearing it and I don't like bracelets. I owe that to not only our staff and all of you guys out there, but I owe that to my family. Um, so if that gives you any sense of comfort, I'm never going to sway on that no matter who's, who guides me or tells me differently. That's so right. I, just, just to answer that question, you wanted, you're basically asking who's going to be accountable for it. It's going to fall on me. Okay. And it's going to fall on everybody else. That's part of this 164 full-time employees that are here because all of us are going to play a role in that some more than others but through the end of it you got rick in the background mayor mentioned dang susie myself and everybody else in between down to the city clerk who's going to post that rfp to make sure that it's right on every one of the rfps that we post it's a team effort if you want to ask for accountability 
that th that's squarely on me. Mm -hmm. That's what we like to hear. We're and that, that's to take responsibility. good, 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 bad or ugly. Um, that comes with the role of that I chose to take. Yeah. Yeah. And then to, to answer some of the other things that you had, and for you, you said you're asking the question for others out there. I want you to understand that water, there's a lot of different forms of water out there. Okay. And Rick, if I speak this incorrectly, please correct me. But there's blue water, which is our clean water, right? It's our drinking water, potable water, something we used to cook with and so forth. We have our brown water, which is that wastewater that we talked about, right? And then we have our gray water, which would be our storm water. So those are the three different types of water that we worry about. The only time we worry about storm water is when it rains real bad, when there's a bad storm, when there's a drainage issue. Those become storm water issues. So when we address and talk about different things having to do with water, that's what we're talking about. This particular grant deals with brown water because at the end of the day, it's the one thing out of those three that you probably say the, that we least want to deal with. And to be honest with you, if the federal government gave us that much money to deal with it, it's because our infrastructure is pretty bad in that sense. And we earn that through our application process and by applying to do so. So obviously that's priority number one. As we address the other forms of water, like we talked about water usage, water shortage and so forth, that'll be your blue water. Then when we talk about drainage, we'll address those issues through our gray water projects. Is that about sum summarize it? And, and I'm saying that only because I like thing in, things in layman terms. I can sit here and be versed all day, but I think by the nod that I'm getting from the public, that made it a little bit easier to understand. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're mm -hmm. trying to provide here. We want to make this a unified, communicative approach where you guys get what we're talking about. So that 49 plus the 7.9 is a deal with brown water. And hopefully when we're done with that, we'll have addressed a large percentage of our brown water issues. In the meantime, we're not going to wait to attack the others. As that's going on, we're going to work on the blue and the gray water issues as well. Yep. So uh, just, just really quickly, uh, Councilman. So the CO for the bond, for, I mean, the CO for the police station, excuse me. The council's uh, thought behind that is um, the citizens needed more time to work through this idea of a new police station. In order to put a bond on a ballot, we would have had to move very quickly. Uh, and we would have had, a, had to settle on numbers that, that I would say, and perhaps maybe the council said in their own way, that we didn't want to bring to the citizens. $15 million is something that we would not have wanted to bring to our citizens, right? So here's what we've decided to do. We've decided to have a public safety committee there's a five member, 10 member public safety committee that will inspect the police station. They will go through the police station. They will look at the requirements of the police station, of a police station, look at what we have in our police station, uh, understand what we need to move forward in a city our size with the, with the uh, issues that we have. Uh, and they are going to, with the work, work, working with the citizens, bring back recommendations to our council on what, if any, we can do to move our police station forward. Now, they can come back with all sorts of numbers. I don't know what they will come back with. I am hopeful that they will come back under $10 million. That's my hope, right? But if they don't, then we have to continue to work. Ultimately, this is what will happen. There will be a number that we will set on. Susie will show us what that number looks like in our tax rate, she will say to us, I will ask her, the council will ask her, if we have a, let's say $10 million, that's just a number guys, just to, just to get clarification. If we've settled on a $10 million police station and we do COs for that, what will that do to our debt service? What would that do to our tax rate? right? Because remember, the council did not change the tax rate. So we are going to see what that'll look like. To David, is David here? David Pennington? To David's point, David wants to see um, what that number, that police number will do to the rest of our budget, to your point too, Councilman. And so we have to be very careful. We have to make sure that we're able to get our folks the new facility, facility they need, but not put us in the position that we are now having to raise our tax rate because I am not for that. And I don't know that anybody else is for that. So that's how that process is going to play out. 
Okay. Did I get you? Did I answer? Yeah, that's, okay. that's great. All I right. Think, I think what we need to do, Mayor, and, and I'm going to have to go because I have a, another meeting, um, is explain what is a certificate of obligation um, to the public because some people don't know what that is. Okay. And so maybe the next let me do that very quickly. So, so general, uh, general obligation bonds or bond is basically a proposal from your council, from your government to the citizens, and you vote on it. So we can say, we want to build a Taj Mahal. We think that that's what we need. And it's going to cost $3 billion. And we're putting it to a vote, right? That's called general obligations. And the people go and vote for that. I want the Taj Mahal. I don't. It's a regular election. If those that want it win, then we get it. A certificate of obligation is different. A certificate of obligation is where the council can say, we are issuing debt for specific projects. Now you can only issue, I believe, Susie, I believe it's $5 million of, of debt per year is all you can issue, right? There's a cap to that. And that's the main difference. The council can issue debt, but there's a cap to it with a certificate of obligation. With a general obligation, the citizens have to vote on whether or not they want that, that debt. And the difference in both of those is usually your larger projects, right? 20, 15, 20, $30 million worth of work. Those usually go to general obligations because those are huge debts. Your smaller debts, for example, uh, our fire station was done under certificates of obligation, right? The smaller debts are usually able to be done by your council. We could simply issue certificates of obligation for a police station, but this council has chosen to incorporate the community. That's why we have a public safety committee. Does that make sense to anybody? Does that, that doesn't make sense to you, ma'am? No. Please, you can, you can approach Ms. Eva. I know you don't like talking in public, but I wanna I want make sure we're clear. That's what I'm saying. I know you don't like talking in public. That's why, but I wanted to make sure that your answer, your questions are answered so that we can we can get everybody what they need. Okay, so my confusion is when when you're talking about the certifications of sure. obligation. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we have that for the fire department, correct? Yes, ma'am. When will that be paid off? That's a good question. And I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Susie. Well, I know it's halfway at 2046. Susie. Yes, sir. Can you help Miss Eva with, yes. a, with a specific number on our fire yes. station? That came out of the 2016 CO and it was a 30 year uh, CO. So 2046. 2046. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's when it's actually paid off because it shows on the Lamarck page yes. that it's only, that still leaves $5 million left on that for our doc, the documents on the Lamarck page. Do you know what I'm talking about for the certificate that was actually signed? Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about, the $5 million. If you don't mind, ma'am, what we'll do only because I'm right. not versed in it. If you allow us to research that further, specifically, I have your question. Yeah. When Most will the fire station be fully paid is your right. question. And then if we do that with the police department, how many years will that take? If we don't, if we do the rollback, I'm just asking that question. So if the rollback goes to where we said, and the police department does still get done, how long will it take to pay that off? So if we need a police department. Yes, ma'am. We need our police. Yes, we don't need any defunding in any shape, way, or form in the city. Right. And and the taxes need to represent what we as a community, not the highest, not the lowest, but everyone in between to work together mm -hmm. to get the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a fighting right. over I think all of this. Stuff. That's a great suggestion because what's that showing is like a graph. This is what it looks like right. over time at 49, 47 cents. This is what it looks like at 55 cents. Yeah. That, that's a, a visual. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And we are working on that uh, uh, graphic to make that easier to be shown. Right. Um, we have something actually, which it's not part of what this meeting is for. We, we do have our, our meeting that's following our, but our that form. would be part of the next budget. Yes, 
It will be. And we essentially in the background are preparing both ways, if you will, hoping that not because as you can imagine, not only the police station, but our debt service and essentially how to operate the city becomes more challenging. Right depending on the vote of the of the actual right, rollback. And that's just because paying, if we're still paying on the fire department, how are we going to be able to afford without the taxes going up again to afford the police department, which we need, but there's got to be, I think there's other ways that we can accomplish that without doing a raise on taxes that we could still do the rollback. I mean, we all know that I look at this stuff, right? So this is something that is to my heart of where we move from to here, the tax difference is we move from Harris County to here and the tax difference is large and our house is worth less. And that's why, <laughs> that's exactly but why. See, that's not right, is it? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just, just without, I without. Say my yeah. Points. No, no, no. I, I don't want feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, but, but, and I get that. I get that. I get, I get that you want to say your points, and I understand that. What I'm suggesting to you is essentially, in your comments, you've answered your own question. You've, no, you, I didn't. Well, you said, you said, I come from Harris County. You a little confused. You, you, you said no, 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 no. You, you, you said you said I came from Harris County, correct? Where my taxes were lower. That's what you said, right? I did. And I, I'm not trying to confuse no. that with what I'm saying is we live here now. This is where we chose to live. The tax rate that we have for this area, I believe, it, I feel like I'm taking up your time. No, no, and I no, just no, wanted to no, ask no, one question. No, it, and, and, and you're like right. No, but some more than and, and Mayor, when, when, when you're done and when you're done, I, I, I'd like to possibly address that in a different manner. And that I want to. That would be great. Thank you. And, and, and the reason why I say that is because, and I'm not trying to take away from the meeting that's going to happen after this, which is a form which better explains some of these questions. But what makes Lamarck different from your Dickinson, your League City, your Galveston is they have other methods that contribute towards the budget that Lamarck currently doesn't have. Correct. And I get that. And, and again, and, and we talk about this as staff, how do we address those challenges? Well, which one came first? You know, like it's where the rubber meets the road, if you will, because to do all these things, we need other forms, whether it be impact fees, raising our uh, regular fees, um, sales tax, et cetera. I mean, the list goes on and on. But in order to do those things, we need to be an attractive location for some of these places, the business that might want to move into Lamarck. So we do get those lower you know, taxes. But the cycle keeps going. And to answer your question, can it be done? Anything can be done. You're, you're going to tell us what the tax rate is and is what it is. But the challenge will be much greater to do it. Right. And at the risk of, like you said, you don't want to lose police. There's going to be a loss in some city services because right. there's only a set. If we told you that your budget the in your home, works. right? No, and, and 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 that's where we have to prioritize things, right? So in your home, if you were told, look, I have to take a, in this case, we're looking at a nine percent pay cut, if you will. Let's look at nine percent. If we look at nine percent, if you had nine percent loss in your home, you've got to make cuts somewhere. Easy. And the thing is, is you're going to say, I'm going to cut here, I'm going to cut there. If you have room for comfort. And that's easier. If you have another form of possible revenue that can come in to make up the difference, that's fine. The current status of where Lamarck is now, that doesn't exist yet. And that's a challenge that we have, which we're ready to address. It just becomes a little steeper of a hill with the result, whatever it may be, of this rollback. And not just speaking facts, not swaying that. His questions did, I, but, but, I just, but did you pull me up i didn't ask no no but but, well, but i wanted you i wanted, you, sure I wanted you i wanted you i wanted you to have a chance to be able to speak yes and yeah I yeah and and okay. and say what you needed to say and and of course we're listening but at the same time in in listening you know there are certain things that we're trying to share as well Correct. and the only thing i was trying to say to you miss eva was 
when you live in a place, when anybody lives in a place where their, their, their property values are higher, let's say half a million dollars, right? Right. It's easier, and this is Cesar's point too, it's easier to have a lower tax rate, right? If, if I have a half a million dollar house, then, then I can have a 25 cent tax rate and raise the same amount of revenues. But that tax rate is still the same for the people that only have a, a $20,000 house in Houston, so that doesn't make any sense. It, 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 do, it, it does. It, but it, I'm it, not it, questioning that. I'm questioning I, I under, I, 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 Well, if I can, if, if I can finish, if, if I can finish, because this is the part that it's important. It factors in. Okay, can I sit? You, oh, you can sit. Okay, yes, ma'am. You can sit. I don't. You don't stand, stand too long. Well, 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 we appreciate that you stood this long. At the, at the, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, what we're saying is this. Because our valuations of our property are not as high as others' valuations, in order to raise the revenues we need, we have to have a certain tax rate. What are we doing with those revenues? We just told you 70% of them go to salary. We just told you 60% of them go to public safety. Tiki Island's tax rate will be lower than ours every day, all day. Their property values are higher right? Way higher. Bear land, friends, we can go on down the line. When you have low valuations of property and you still have needs, because in Friendswood, they don't have as many crimes. They don't have as many shootings. They don't need as much police protection. They don't have, to my understanding, a fire department. So they don't have to pay firefighters. We have to do all that, y'all. We, we have to pay for this robust police force because our crime is higher than the state average. We have to provide for our fire department because they're protecting us. They are, we pay them to do that. You cannot get all of these things in $13.5 billion. You cannot squeeze blood out of a turnip, no matter what way you look at it. So I'm going to finish with uh, Councilman. Thank you for being patient. Let me let me run down this reserves. Uh, our reserves, as you know, uh, Councilman, they are not for a rainy day for us to be able to help pay some bills that that we had that 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 we had left over. Our rainy day fund is primarily for disaster. Our reserves. That's what, what Councilman Osteen is referring to. Our reserves are for disasters like a hurricane. Do you know that when hurricane, hurricanes hit, they do billions of dollars in damage? We only have, according to uh, Mr. Osteen, 12 million. If a hurricane hit this summer and, and Lamarck took a direct hit, do you think that $12 million will suffice? It doesn't matter because right now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know how long it takes to claim insurance? Do you know how long it takes? It takes literally, literally, we took four or five years, is that right, Susie? To recoup monies from Ike and Harvey. Four or five years. What yes. are we doing in the interim? Right? So here's the other thing it does. Here, here's, the, here's the other thing it does. So it also, I mean, we can, here's the thing. We can, we, can, we can be how we are when it comes to taxes. Nobody wants to pay taxes. I get it. I'm with you. But at the end of the day, I have to be truthful with you to tell you what the conditions are that we're in. And you can decide whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter to me. I'll do whatever the community says. But I, in good conscience, I have to explain to you the truth. The other thing, Councilman, is this reserve fund is there for catastrophic infrastructure failures. If, if the same sewer lines that we are talking about, now y'all know sewer lines are all over this city bursting. Water lines are bursting. Drainage is backing up. 
those are catastrophic events. They can, they can be, potentially. What's that 12 million gonna do when an entire sewer line goes kaput and that sewer is backing up in your house? True story happens every day in the city of Lamar. So reserve funds were never meant to use to stretch and pay for annual expenditures. That is fiscally irresponsible. And any person that has ever been in municipal government or any sort of government or has ran any sort of business knows better than that. And so, Councilman, the reserve fund is for emergencies. It is not prudent for this council to spend monies out of a savings account to cover a light bill. Now, you also asked about a rollback election. It's, it's been uh, talked about, we are at 55 cent. Let me say this in a way that's very factual. We're at 55 cent now, there is a rollback. If the rollback succeeds, we will go to 47 cent. That is about a million dollars roughly, what we will roll back to. Now, that million dollars at this point, what have we done with that million dollars? Well, we have bolstered our police force. We've added six new police persons. We've added police cars. We've added four new persons for uh, 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 public works to clean our ditches and, and uh, uh, our easements uh, and things of that nature. And so if this rollback passes, the council will have to deal with that part of our budget. That's about all I can say about it. Not for it, not against it. It is what it is. Does that make sense? Mayor, uh, point of clarification on one item that was asked. The amount of reserves is not 12 million. Um, and just as a point of clarification, I just confirmed we're closer to 3.5 to four, which is what we have to operate in case of emergency for roughly 90 days. That's separate from the reserves. That, no, that's separate from the investments. Right. Okay. I mean, right. Investments, yeah. That the two totally different uh, vehicles. And Susie's on the line if, if we care for her to better explain. But I don't, these are great questions, but I also know that we have a lot of folks here that want to ask. And I know you have one more question. One to more. And then, well, yeah. But we can answer those questions differently because some of the questions we're addressing are part of the next meeting that's going to occur. And I don't want to take away from folks that need to go home and do stuff. So, out of respect to that mayor, if you want to. Yeah, answer last thing I'm going to say is why the, why the tax rate? Um, let me say this. I'm not, I'm at this point, uh, I can get down there out of this shirt and I can tell you a bunch of reasons why up here in this shirt, I can just basically say what the council's intent was and let the people decide. Visiting with these fine folks doing the budget workshop and going through listening tours and listening to our neighbors. One of the things people said that they wanted was they wanted to feel safe. All last spring, last summer, people were saying they wanted to feel safe. So the council acted in that capacity. We acted to, tr to try to provide more safety. That's essentially what we did. And so that's why the council elected to hold the tax rate the same because people, bullets were flying, people were getting shot, drug dealers were living across the street from people raising all sorts of holy chaos, <laughs> right? So, so we got tired of that. The other thing was people got tired of mowing their ditches and floods happening and storms happening. So that's why we added the four folks. So our intent was simply to respond to what you all were saying we needed. And that's, that's why we, we kept the tax rate the same. We needed those things because that's what you all said that we needed. I appreciate it. I think it was productive for us and the citizens, but let me, let me say one thing to everybody. Uh, we all know expenses is going up. Fuel is doubled, and one thing this city uses is a lot of fuel. But uh, I, I sit on council right at 15 years off and on, and uh, we always fought high taxes. And when I look back, it's probably kind of why we're in a safe wind right now. When I first moved to Lamar, taxes was 61 cents for $100 value. And over the years, the council kept cutting it back. That's what the citizens wanted. Uh, it takes money to operate. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I can publicly tell you, I'm against the rollback. And uh, I'm not going to support it. Hey, James, hey. James, do me one more favor. Would you come back? 
and approach. Just, just let me do this right quick. Say so. I, please do. James, you and I have served on this council. I was a kid when, right? right? How many times did we raise taxes? We never raised taxes. Okay. All right. And, okay. and, and just at a point of clarification, Mr. Osteen, and I want to commend you for something that you said in there. You, you said maybe we were part of that, like where we are now type of situation. We, all part of, we were part of it. And I want to commend you on that. You want to know why? That takes a lot of ownership. And if anything you deserve an applause for is for that, because although arguably part of the problem, you're now here trying to be part of the solution I am. and you're owning that. And I, I can personally tell you as a resident of Lamarck, I, I, that's the first step we all need to take. Well, so thank you. That. But uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, I may be able to tell you, I, I, I tell it like it is. I don't lie. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> We had a, I lived in Rwanda Pines. We had a young family who just moved into the house. They 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 lived in Alvin. They worked were working out. The builder, the same house in Alvin was about seventy five thousand dollars more than it was in Rwanda Pines. That's why our tax rate got up. Plain and simple. And yeah. it's that correlation of understanding that will allow everybody to understand where the correlation lies. If we lived in different areas and had different resources, then we would be more than happy to drop that. Actually, legally, and Susie's on the call, we have the obligation to understand that. We have that obligation to because there's a limit to how much we can charge based on those property value increases. So understand that, you know, we all live here, so we're all in, in this together and, and we're all affected by it. So understanding that that perspective that we all have a vested interest in it because, and even the way the, the, the not talk about the thing because we're very, very limited on what we can say, but even the way the ballot is written, anybody who reads that who may not understand will probably say, well, of course I want less taxes. And that's fine. And we respect that, but understand the potential change that that would cause. So on, on that note, does anybody else, because we need to close this meeting so we can have the next one, does anybody else have any comments specifically on things that you would like to see in your communities? Um, and I know um, Councilwoman Yancey uh, mentioned to me one thing as a resident, not as a council person, and I don't know if there's anybody here from District A, but having a park in District A, which I know that um, Mr. Bach is here, I know something that he and, and the parks were, are working on, as part of their parks master plan. Those are the types of things that we want to see more of. It's gonna take us getting creative about how we're gonna address these things. It's gonna take a, a collective approach of how we do these things. That being said, I see different members who have not come up and said anything. And if you're not welcome talking in this format, that's also okay. Uh, I don't have cards yet, I, I will soon, but my email is c.garcia. And then the rest is the same as everybody else's, which is at cityoflamark.org. Um, I thank you all for your time and those that have already extended such a warm welcome. Does anybody else have another chance where they'd like to say something in any form, in any way? If it's not by phone, email, or this meeting, we want to know the things that you want. Because I've been taking a couple of pages of notes here. I know staff's been doing the same. We're recording the meeting so we can go back and listen to it, and make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, I just have a question. It was it was lower than 13.5. It was it was probably in, in the in the mid 12s, if just off the top of my head. What, what is what's happening is this in over the last two years the central appraisal district has raised the valuations of our property exponentially like by 20 percent one year and i think it might have been 20 percent the other year uh and so because of that that's causing the all of our tax bills 
to go up, not only not only necessarily in in in, in our city, but just throughout the county. They they they've raised values all over. Yeah, it, it's about a million dollars different. Everybody's out there. Yeah. So what do these, you know, kind of uh, percentage, you know, projects, you know, increase here and increase here? Not the, the percentage of the market value increase that 20% and the budget from last year is just a fraction of, of the increase. Right, right, right. I got you. That's not the city. <laughs> No, and, and, no, you're and, fine. You're and fine. that's a great point that you're making. And I, I, I want to make sure that that is, you know, said because you mentioned inflation. Arbitrarily, our increase is not even coming close to match what's happening with inflation. So technically, when you look at it in that perspective, we're operating at a lower budget in today's dollars than we were in yesterday's dollars. That's another misconception. Um, and that's something that is missed often. So I, I thank you for that comment from, from the public because that's something that folks don't always remember. Um, and so you understand the average, and I'm gonna not be exact on my numbers, what I'm about to say, what this rollback equates to is roughly seven to $8 per average household per month in Lamarck. That's not everybody's household. Mr. Osteen just mentioned he has more land, so his is different than somebody else. So I want you guys to understand what numerically, if you wanna know what it is, it's the price of a very expensive latte a month or the price of an extra value meal, if, you know, that, that's what we're talking about and understand what that equates to. And that's an average, it's not, it's not to everybody because if somebody owns more land or a bigger home or let me say that, a higher assessed home, that value is gonna be different versus someone who owns a lower assessed home. But on average, if we're gonna summarize it in average, that's what it is. And we're not in any which way, shape, shape or form telling you how to vote not because we're not just doing that, but we can't. We're educating you on the difference. You ask the questions that are being addressed in this format that we're doing. Great question. If you do, it means this. If you don't, it means that. Take that with and do that what you would like, but understand what that means. Because um, I don't think anybody can make an educated decision and some, some, subsequently a vote without doing yeah. that. Yeah, let, let me say this. Just, just really quickly to Mr. Yarbrough's point. Um, so, so what I really want us to to to, to do is, you, you know, over the past year, this city has been hyper sensitive. There's been a lot of tension, and what that's doing is it's causing us not to not to want to hear each other. And so, you got people that think differently with different ideas and different understandings, but they can't talk because there's a lot of tension, right? But the only way we get through this is if we talk, we figure out, we talk to each other about these things. And at the end of the day, again, nobody wants to pay any more of anything, right? Inflation is causing all of our costs to go up. And I think that I know that, know that I think that many of us do. But also, Mr. Yarbrough, inflation is going up even in, in city government too. 
You know, like like we have to pay more for gas like everybody else. And But but let, so let me ask you this, Mr. Yarbrough, to your point, and I, and I, I believe you, and certainly you and I can ride. I've I've rode with several people, sat on porches. I'll do that. But but do you think that they're they, in your opinion, failing, or maybe they aren't as efficient as they should be? It, is 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 could that be because they don't have the resources that they need? I I, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. And and. Mr. Yarbrough, if, if you don't mind, if I can get your phone number and your address so I can follow up on that. Um, yeah, because just, just so I can. And that's what we're trying to say. Look, we're not up here saying we're perfect. We're not up here saying that right. we catch all the things, but we need your help in identifying some of the things because we are limited in that. Most cities, our size with our sets of issues, probably have a code enforcement department more than twice our size. Yeah. Um, and and so to that extent, we can address some of those issues better with your input. Um, and I, I, yeah, and Mr. Yarbrough, all I was going to say to you to to end what I was saying was, you know, a lot of stuff, limestone, things that supplies we use, light bills, these things are going up for us too. So just imagine, if you will, the the rollback suggests that we stay at the same amount of revenue as last year, right? So it, if, if, if we made do with $5 last year, the rollback says we have to make do with $5 again this year. But what's happening to the rest of the other stuff, right? It's going up. It's a predicament, isn't it? So, so, so at the end of the day, that's what we have to navigate. Like, if we roll back, will it will it make it any better, or will it make it worse? I don't know. You know, we have to figure that out together, and I'm glad that we can do that. Any other questions? I would like to take you up on that right along. We could yeah. work to schedule that, and yeah, uh, you know, I, I, one thing is, and for so many folks that have reached out that I haven't had a chance to get back to yet. Um, just because I have it doesn't mean I won't. It just there's a lot of you coming up to me with, with things that we're trying to address. <laughs> um, and so I, I thank you all again for the warm welcome. If no one else has anything to say for the sake of time, and so all y'all can uh, uh, take part in this next meeting so that you don't have to um, stay too late. Yeah, let's move move quickly. We are we're closing the meeting, uh, the the budget pre budget uh, meeting. And we're simply opening now a tax form at 734, Kyle. Yes. We're opening a tax form. And this is the point of the meeting that, that we are talking about taxes. And if there's any person in our audience or online that would like to have comments or questions about taxes, you may approach or raise your hand at this time. Does anybody have any questions about or uh, comments about uh, this tax, upcoming tax rollback election? Okay, Ms. Cumby, you want, do you want to go first, ma'am? It, it's 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 roughly about really seven six to seven dollars a month uh depending upon what what your value is uh a month is the difference so it it's it's in it's like 70 plus dollars a year is what it ends up being and if you'd like for us to get you what that looks like for you we could work to help you to give you more an exact number 
that that number is more of an average. Yeah. So it depends on your assessed value to give exact, but blindly without knowing, then that's the number we would have to give on average. And and the the other part of that, Miss Cumby, and the rest of us that 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 are, that are listening, if you are sixty five and older, and you have already uh, been granted your freeze for your senior for, for being sixty five, if you are underneath the fifty five cent rate, because some people got their freeze at forty nine cents or forty seven cents. Some people got it at 53 cents. You're paying no more money. There is, if, if you are a senior citizen, there is no way for you to pay any more money in taxes than you are already paying right now. No way, period. It can't happen. Can it be reduced? Obviously, it can be reduced. But there's no way for you to pay more. And I think it's important that our seniors know that, that, that they, they will not see any increase in, in, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Terry, you had a question? Yeah, I'd uh, Well, just to clarify, that also is would be assess value, meaning what you're being assessed at because on average, right, but I, I, I believe that that to be accurate. Yeah, uh, yeah. Per hundred thousand is about six six dollars a month. Let me also say while we are waiting on questions, let me let me say this. The council did not circumvent any law. To circumvent a law is to break a law. We didn't do that. Legal has told us on several occasions that our actions on this council as it relates to our tax rate are legitimate, they are proper, and they are legal. Our finance director, who I believe is still here, is she still here, Cesar? So? Yes. Okay. She has greenlit what we've done as legal, as appropriate, and as consistent with many cities across this country. And what I'm saying is when we moved, when we placed, because we didn't move, when we placed four new employees into our enterprise fund, remember the enterprise fund is the fund that we pay our water bills into. And so those people that work on our infrastructure the law says that we can pay them out of that fund. That's not illegal. That's what this council chose to do. Again, CESAR has to supervise those crews in the utility department. He has to make sure that our water infrastructure is maintained. So a portion of his salary can be paid for out of the utility fund and the portion of the public works director's salary. That is not circumventing a system that is allowing the users of the water services to pay into the upkeep of those water services. If you live in an apartment, you don't pay property tax, but you use water. So are you telling me that we don't want the people that pay that live in apartments that's using all the water, running the water like everybody else, that we don't want them to pay into the, the uh, utility fund? We don't want them to pay their way for water? Because that's all we did. That's all the council did was basically say, everybody that uses water in Lamarck will now have to pay for some of those things that we use to maintain our water system, i.e. people. That's all we did. There's nothing illegal about that. There's nothing unethical about that. In fact, that is more ethical because it's making the people that use the service pay into the service. That's more ethical. That's not less ethical. It's legal. Questions?
David, you want to come talk to me about uh, the balance between. <laughs> See you later, Miss, Miss. I was going to say your name, but you might not want people to know that you were sneaking out. Huh? <laughs> Miss L. <laughs> hey, David, thanks for coming, man. You're welcome. Uh, the mayor and I have talked on several occasions. One of my concerns was Senate Bill 2. Mm -hmm. passed in the legislature, mm -hmm. created a formula to where the more debt service you have, the less chance you have of be of generating a rollback election. Uh, maybe you want to explain that to them a little bit. I, I, I didn't understand it at first. The mayor explained it to me. Um, and my big concern was that we're putting a lot of stuff into debt service, mm -hmm. such as uh, we, we put the fire truck or the fire station in there at some point in time. Mm -hmm. We've got to put a fire truck in there recently. Uh, $600 for great alls, uh, computers for police department, that went into debt service. And now if we're talking about a police station, that's another 10, just say 10 million that's going to go into debt service. Mm -hmm. And and I'm kind of concerned that these things are not going to be paid off anytime soon. Sure. And I don't want the city to get in a position to where we're going to be in a bind and can't pay our bills five, 10, 15 years down the road. Right. Uh, and the way the formula is set up, it's almost like you're forcing, they're forcing cities to go into debt in order to be able to raise their tax rate. Right. Uh, so that, that's my concern is the debt service is getting higher and higher. Will it get to the point to where it levels out to where the citizens won't have an opportunity for a rollback election because the way the formula is, it balances out at some point. Right. So that, that's a great discussion that you and I have been having um, uh, and, and you're, you're right. Uh, the uh, in my this is my interpretation it doesn't mean that that's what the bill was intended seems like that senate bill 2 does favor cities going more into debt and i think that their goal is to have cities go into uh, ultimately is i don't think that we're there yet but ultimately voter approved debt i think that ultimately this is this train is headed to where you won't be able to incur debt unless the voters approve it right uh, and so there's the balance. So our tax rate, the 55 cent tax rate is broken up into a couple of pieces. Part of it is maintenance and operations. That's your day to day. That's, that's when we, when, 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 when we uh, pay for uh, Cesar's lovely pin on his shirt, that's, that's, that's your day to day maintenance and operations. Then you have your debt service. Your debt service is we bought a house. We, we bought a new vehicle, right? We are remodeling that house. Those are your one-time big expenditures. Those two, uh, uh, those two uh, accounts, if you will, come together to make our tax rate. And so what you have is, I believe our debt service rate is about 16 to 19% right now. And the rest of it is our maintenance and operation side. So to your point, David, as you begin to put more things into your debt service side, that starts to climb. If that climbs and this stays the same, your tax rate will climb. You're right. If this climbs, only two things can happen to make this better for us. This has to go down, right? So if we have 55 cent and let's say 16 cent of it now is, and I don't know if that's the true number, Susie can tell us, debt service. We start putting police stations in there. That number will jump from 16 to 18 to, to 20. And if that number jumps to 20, then now we only have 35 cent on this side if we want to stay at 55. Or we would have to bump up the whole rate. Or, or what we can do 
is drop the maintenance and operation side of the budget, which means that we would have to cut some things. Or, 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 third option, Amazon is on the way. We still have not realized any tax revenue from Amazon. This is a bridge, folks. We need to just get through this year. We don't know what Amazon's gonna do as far as the tax output. And Jerome Karam just bought the whole dog track. And he's talking about a whole concert venue. And we're getting sales off of those tickets. And we're getting the new property values off of the new re revenue off of, off of some of those property improvements. And they're talking about put grocery stores and retail outlets and hotels and all kind of other stuff out there. So eventually to Cesar's point, the other parts of our ability to raise taxes and funds will catch up to our property taxes. But right now, it just has not happened yet. 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 And so therein is the, is, is the discussion, lovely discussion. And my answer to you, David, is me personally, as your mayor, I will not vote for any tax rate above 55 cents. And I suspect that as this budget year comes around, we will be able to augment what we have now with some new revenue coming from new home bills and Amazon. And then in the future, because Jerome Karen moves fast, then the year after that, we're probably gonna see some revenues from that, that, that new event center that he's putting out there. This is the year we are about a year too soon, in my opinion. Now, we can do what we want, and I don't have an answer for you. We can vote against the tax rollback. We can vote for the tax rollback. I don't have a dog in that fight. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'm simply trying to answer your question with factual information. Did I, did I kind of get what we have been talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. I, I appreciate that. And, and like, if I may, something that we didn't also talk about is only because I spent so much of my morning with tech stock when that is finished and we have a better view of what our frontage roads are going to look like on I-45. In the meantime, while we work on our infrastructure changes, there may be other changes. Although we're, nobody likes to be the highest tax rated city or looked at, n nobody wants that, but we're setting ourselves up to no longer be in that in the very near future. It's going to just take some time. But the decisions we make today, as Mr. Osteen mentioned earlier, decisions we make today will affect that and it's going to take time for those effects to come out. I'd also be remiss, this graphic that was just shown, we have been working on it up until the time of, it was actually finished <laughs> while we were in here, which is why it wasn't shown until now. And I already have a, a few changes to it, but we want to, to Mr. Snowfall's point, who, who, who um, now, now has left, we want to make this clear. We want to make it simple. We want to make it easily understandable so everybody clearly sees where their funds are going. And tough decisions are ahead, but no one's going to be able to say that they don't know anymore. I think you've already kind of answered this question, but I'm going to ask it one more time. You're going to use certificates of obligation to build a new uh, police station. You've already determined that, correct? We've determined that we are going to allow the Public Safety Committee to ascertain whether or not we need one and make a recommendation. And then the council will have to deliberate on okay. that. Yes, yes, sir. Now, let's just suppose you're going to go with that. And we know that those COs are going to raise our tax rate, although we don't know exactly how much yet, correct? Correct. Okay. They're going to raise, they, they would raise the debt service side of it. Yes. Which will also raise our taxes. Unless we raise, unless we lower the maintenance and operation side of it. Correct. It's two parts of our budget, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if it's 55 cent and let's say 15 cent of it is in debt service and, and that has to jump up to 20, then that mm -hmm. means that this 40 cent has to jump down to 35 or we have to get new, new revenue in, i.e. Amazon, new okay. home bills. Okay. But let's suppose we're not we're not going to see that for any of that. Year. Okay. Yeah. Let's we're talking right now today. Okay. Okay. So we know our taxes are going up because of the COs that you're going to issue. Certificates of obligation. Explain to me why, if I know my tax rate's already going up, 
And I read somewhere the other day that uh, appraisal districts across the state are working to raise our property taxes mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. substantially. Mm -hmm. So I know that my property uh, appraisal is going to go up. So now that's two tax rates that I'm talking about here now. Explain to me why I should keep the tax rate at 55 as you're proposing. Or uh, as we said it, as right? As we say it is, yes, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. As opposed to voting for the rollback and going to 47 and being able to save some money. Well, I, I, am, am I making sense here? I'm asking the right question. Knowing that, let me let me let me say it back to you. Knowing that that a certificate of obligation mm -hmm. could potentially raise the debt service side of our, our budget right. and and potentially raise our overall tax rate. And there is uh, through the grapevine, if you will, an effort to raise the valuations even more. Why would you vote to stay 55 is what you're saying? Why would you vote to keep it 55? Yeah, yeah. No, knowing that our taxes are going to be going, or we're going to be paying more taxes next year. Why would we vote to keep it at 55 as opposed to taking the 47 cents now and save it a little bit. What 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 would you what is your goal? What what is what is I guess my question would be what is your goal as a member of this community? What would your goal be? What do you what do you want to see? I would like to see Lamarck a better city. Okay. And and I have no problem with a new police station. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm concerned about some of these people out here that may be struggling to pay the taxes at their at the rate they are right now uh and, and you know folks like me i'm over 65 mine are set it's not going to affect sure. me much sure now the 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 value of my home is going to be up that that'll affect it some but yeah there are other young families out here that are really struggling and i'm afraid with all these tax rates and the property values going up it's really going to put them in a bind so, so here's, let, let me say this to you. I just really quickly, I grew up in public housing. My grandmother paid $12 a month in rent for our three bedroom in public housing. We used to call it the projects. I left there, went to my mom, my grandmother died. And she was a crack addict and I went days without eating. I've seen more than my share of eviction notices. So when people say that they are at the point that they don't know what they can do physically to get by, I know that story intimately, right? But I also understand that, that I live in a city and I want things, basic things. Like I, I want to go outside at night to take my trash out without thinking whether or not I'm gonna have to duck. I want to go to whatever convenience store of my choosing in my city and go and get my daughter a soda when she wants a soda. Everything is going up. Inflation has hit all of us. But at some point, we have to make the decision on what we want as a community. And if if we were to stay at 40 or were to go to 47 cent, then we're saying we want the same thing that we got last year, but it won't be the same because those police officers, well, I'm not going to go there because we can't convince you. It won't be the same. If you start to think about fuel and, and resources and it, it just won't be the same, right? And I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But I, I also know there are some struggling families out there. And I just wanted to make sure that we consider them in this sure. as well. Sure. So that, that's, a, that's the point I was trying to get across. And that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point, David. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that we have to find a way to move our city forward to get the things we want. Because when we go out there, when you look at social media, you see broken pipes, high grass, Mr. Yarbrough, you see high grass, you see pumps. I think over that way you live, Mr. Yarbrough, there's a pump 
we don't even, you know, the, the pump is like, is a portable pump. It's pumping up out the, right? Streets, Mr. Pettyjohn talked about streets. These things cost, they cost, look, look at that on the, on the screen there. 56% of our budget goes to public safety. And I am all for that, 100%, because I know the value of public safety. But I'm just saying that 60% of your budget right there, that's not counting public works, code enforcement, wastewater treatment, finance, city attorney. It's not counting the library, all of these other utility billing, all of these other departments and their needs. And I get it. Nobody, especially now, wants taxes to be raised. And everybody is looking at their government, not just Lamarck, but Texas, the state, the, the, the uh, federal government. All of us are looking at our government with skepticism. We all are. We don't know who to trust. That's true. But, but that cannot interfere with our clear-minded, deliberate, thoughtful process of doing what's necessary to make our city better, whatever that looks like for us. My heart for all of us is that we do what's necessary to make our city better. If you think that's what, if you think that's a tax rollback, then stand for that. But know that either way, there are going to be issues. What do you want your city to look like moving forward? That's the key for me. So, did I get it? You got it. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. Do we have any more comments or questions? Councilman. What's the, uh, the 21st? 20, the, the 21st, it sounds like, and I'll need Cesar's help with this, but it sounds like Cesar is getting his feet wet. It sounds like he's meeting with all of his department heads and they're crafting some things, information pieces. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like. May I? Yeah. Um, the main reason was because we knew that folks may not all have a chance to come out tonight. Um, for those residents that may have not had the opportunity to do so. Again, as Mayor mentioned, we're starting the budget process earlier. It was a point of uh, emphasis that we did so this year and we're doing that. And this method of doing so is not just us starting how we normally would in the summer. We're starting with this portion in April so we can start working and drive a budget off of what's being said in May, making sure there's nothing new, make sure we didn't miss anything that we're addressing these items. So the 21st is gonna be more opportunity of that with more information for us to, to, to present as we're presenting um, as we speak. So this document that we're sharing now, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more uh, depth into what that is only after folks who come to the public to voice what their needs are. Um, and it's more of an education piece really of to educate what's going on with our budget, where we stand now. And then at that form, we'll be able to educate anybody else on more specific instruction. If anybody has any questions on what does the tax rollback mean for me, we can be available to answer that question by saying, all right, what's your address? Let's look up your assessed value. And this is what it'll mean for you. So you yourselves are all educated too. And if you or yourself or any of the neighbors have that question, we can, we'll be better prepared to do that at that next meeting. The basis of it is just to attain your needs and wants and as time allows without taking too much of the actual time, because there's, a, there's another forum will follow that. It'll allow that opportunity for you to answer those questions about the budget separate from the forum. If you have the question about the forum, we could do that in the back. We can work with you, set up a meeting afterwards to answer that specific question and address those that way. It's more of bridging the gap to where there's not that thought that there's a lack of communication and a lack of openness. I want to make sure you guys understand that we welcome, we want that so we can address these things together. So, so let me say this, as we address, we, we try to address, you have a question, Delon? Let me, let me say this, come on, come on up here. Let me, I wanna say this, come on, come on. Why, why are you coming? Why, 
what I'm trying to say to you is this. We have, and I said this before, one of the highest violent crime rates in the state. In the state, we have one of the, one of the highest property crime rates in the state. How do we make our city safe if we don't give our police department what they need? Does, is anybody in here under the illusion that they just get kicks and giggles out of going out there, sometimes two of them patrolling a whole city, scared to death whether or not they're going to be attacked and, and overmanned? Does anybody in here think that that's fun? because I don't think they do. And yet there are nights, I'm sorry, uh, Sergeant Crow, but I have to say this. Do you not know that there are nights and days in our, in our city that there are only two officers patrolling our whole city? Just two, it's two. And we're in here discussing rollbacks. And maybe you didn't know that but that's a factual piece of information. We're here to give you facts. How do we keep ourselves safe with two of the very best men and women this country has to offer, but there's still only two of them? When we hear about all of these mantras and rollbacks and it might not, it might not uh, make you less safe, but it might. And what if it were you? I went to Kima this Sunday to watch the sunset. Leaving, walking out, security guard said to me, sir, can you walk around? Yes, sir, I don't have a problem. How do I get out? Oh, you get out that way. There was a man on the ground. Drove home, looked on Facebook. As I was walking to my car, they were having a shootout. What happens if I was 10 paces? I don't think that we, we really get the gravity of what we're talking about here. Delon. Um, I just wanted to comment on, if it's okay, um, David's question. I don't know where he's at back there. He actually asked a very good question. Um, and being that I was here and heard it, I just kind of wanted to address that because it is a, um, it's a really important question to, I uh, thought to think about. Um, I too used to be a single mom of three children. Um, I may have never been on public housing or anything like that, but I was a struggling single mother of three kids. Um, and so I know first I'll say I want my city to move forward. I want my city to look good and I want it to be safe. When I go past, when I go into Texas City, you know, I look at their stadium, I look at everything and I'm like, why Lamar don't look like that, right? Well, um, and that's why even more so, um, I am supportive of um, the tax, the new tax rate, because in order, it's like being on a job to me, um, I don't want to stay on a job and never get a raise. Um, I know it's a little different, but with things going up, how can our city move forward without it right now? Um, so I just want to say that. And then back to, to David, this is where, um, even though um, we're, many of us are wanting the tax, I mean, who want to have higher taxes, but um, being that that's what needs to take place to get the change that we need to start that process. Um, to me, this is where the community come into play um, when it comes to our struggling families. So this is where we need to come together as a community. And, and I would say, maybe not focus so much on the, on the new tax rate, but we all should get together as citizens and say, how can we um, continue to help educate um, what can we do to meet with them to start, you know, to help them maybe start thinking about starting their own business. To me, I just think as a community, we have 
I don't have a responsibility to just go around taking care of people in the neighborhood. Um, but because I genuinely care, I think we too have a responsibility to maybe see what we all can do as citizens um, to maybe, I don't wanna to continue to say help educate, that's part of it, but what can we do to pull together um, as a community um, you know, to help them know about the resources that are out there for them, like starting their own business, like grants. You know, I may not know how to write a grant, but maybe I can direct them to someone that does or, and I know these things take money too, but the more we continue to educate and the more I think that the community comes together, like if I knew of a struggling family, you know, what can I do to help them learn maybe how not to struggle because I was a struggling mother. Now I'm not asking you these questions, I'm actually, going back to making a David. point yeah, making yeah. A point. yeah. Um, and so if I just kind of continue to sit behind the scenes and um, and don't do anything about it well you know I I, I don't think it should um, necessarily be where we can't have a tax rate increase based on that I just feel we as a community do need to come together and see what resources we can pull to help our struggling families um, to start their own business or things like that. I just feel we as a community do have a responsibility. Yeah, that's, and a, that's I just an excellent say point. That. Not in a mean way, David, but in a in a positive way. Um, I just want to make sure I say that because I too was yeah. a, sing, a single mother, you know, with three kids and I, I worked and I know not everybody is able to work. Not everybody is on public housing or, um, you know, down because of not, um, not being able to work. There, there may be some other circumstances that put them in their situation, I understand, um, but we just need to pull together, I think, as a community. And I just wanna say that here because I know there are people listening in. I'm always willing to meet with anyone in the community, see, in the community to see what we can do, um, you know, to do such a thing for those struggling families. I mean, I used to be one, so I'm, I'm definitely down to do that, David, if you, would like to get with me afterwards. I think it's just something good that we could do, no matter if there's a, a tax rate increase or not. But I just think it's something we should have been doing and something we should do going forward. So I just wanted to yeah. address that. Thank you for that, Thank Delon. You. That's an excellent point. So, <clears throat> so what Ms. Delon basically said was she wants to be part of the change she wants to see. A solution. And I think that's what all of you are out here saying is that you all want to be part of the change that you want to see. If you could help us voice that same sentiment amongst all those that maybe couldn't make it tonight, we could all be part of that same solution that we all want. Um, and, and, and to that extent, one of the things that I didn't write down during the budget, but has clearly come up from both of your comments is maybe a need for some social services that could help some of those families in that facet. And yeah. I have duly noted that to see what we could do, whether through grants or through just partnerships with other folks, not to take away from this meeting, but I think the overall basis oh, you're we right. want to do you're, is- You're dead on, Cesar, you're dead on. I, I appreciate that. We, um, guys, it, it's, you know, we're, I, I won't sugarcoat it and, and suggest to you that we're not in a good space. I'm coming, I'm, that's why I'm going, Miss Jackie. I'm, I'm heading that way. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you we are in a, a great uh, situation. We are not. But just in my life experience and in my experience here on council, what I've learned is that when we're in situations like we are now, we have to band together. We've got to put some of this stuff out. You know, we're angry. We're upset. I get it. All of us are. You know, all of us want things to be better. We do. Um, but the way that we get to the to, to the better is we have to start talking to each other and putting down some of these things that, you know, causing so much fighting and things like that. And we have to start talking to each other. There were some people here tonight that it sounds like, you know, they are reluctant to, to hold the tax rate at 55. And that's okay to be that way. It's okay to feel that way. We get it. I understand it. But we actually talk to each other, right? Mr. Yarbrough was talking to us and we talked back to him and, and Ms. Eva as well. You know, we, we understood each other a little better. And that's how we get to the point where we can solve some of this stuff. Won't happen overnight, 
but it definitely won't happen if we keep fighting. But it will happen if we if we stop fighting, we start to communicate and talk. Now, having said that, Miss Jackie, it's 810. And unless there are other pressing issues, uh, there's one more slide. There's a Starbucks coffee. JB then hit us with the last slide. Is that the last slide, JB? That slide is saying. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Art of Coffee is nowhere near that expensive. I've been there and <laughs> Starbucks is way more expensive and I'm not going to Starbucks anymore after that. Yeah. At, as you can see, guys, there are some differences between 2020 and 2021. While the tax rate did not change. Do y'all see that? While the tax rate didn't change, the value changed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's what the problem is. It went from 139 to 154. That's the problem right there. And that led to a tax rate increase uh, from 767 to 850. And that's where that million dollars, you see there at the bottom? The mid from, from 5.3, to $6.4 million, that is, that is your maintenance and operation side of your budget, your property taxes. That's what that is. And it's saying that it grew $1.1 million. And it's saying that the council did nothing for it to grow. That the average homestead taxable value is what caused it to grow. And, and then if you can't see, this information says, on the average homestead, the tax change, 10%, is $82.97. Over the span of one year, it says that that is $6.91 a month. We have been pulling each other's hair out since July, or oh, I'm sorry, since September. We've been pulling each other's hair out since September for $6 and 91 cent on average on average on average, on average a month average. or or 23 cent a day <laughs> the election is costing more than that so a lot of us lose a quarter every day This slide has above breakdown and the coffee cup. Uh oh, I wasn't supposed to read it. <laughs> um, just, just also for for for, for a point of clarification, um, as a reference to what this is, these are not our figures. These figures are coming straight from. And it just, Kyle, if you can zoom in on that for for point of reference on that on the bottom right there, this is the same document. Uh, that's available to you guys. It's on our website, but it's also available on the uh, counties. Yes, Cesar. Cesar won't say it like this, but I will. <laughs> A lot of us got some information in the mail. And what Cesar is saying is those are the same, this is the same information or the same information sheet as those other numbers. They came from the same piece of information. So you see how you can take information? This is the exact document, an excerpt from the exact document. No words or anything changed. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle. We just cut it out because not bore you with the whole page of it. Um, and as a point of clarification, one thing that we are working on is making it less wordy. But in a sense, we may not want to do that because we don't want to be accused of changing anything. We want to make sure that we're giving you to you straight from what's there. Um, Translation. <laughs> we didn't change nothing about this. This is what we grabbed from Miss Johnson's information. And all Cesar did and, and JB did, they cut part of it out and pasted it for you to see. We didn't change anything. That's all he's trying to say. And we apologize for not having this prior, but 
honestly, I didn't even want to release it tonight. Um, but I, I did feel the need to do so for a point of clarification. Guys, I want to thank you all for coming and spending two and a half hours with us tonight. Um, we definitely had to get a lot of things straight. I want to thank Cesar Garcia. Let's give Cesar a round of applause, guys. Yes. I want to thank Cesar for having the vision to do a pre-budget workshop so that, so that we can hear what those priorities are. And I know we kind of segued quickly into the discussion about taxes, but the point uh, that Cesar is making is our government is open for you to address and for you to share your questions and your concerns. And we'll have the same thing on April 21st. Thank you, Cesar, for your presentation. I want to thank my friend Joe Campion up here for always being here available to the constituency. Uh, and certainly he's always a deep thinker uh, and a listener. So he's thinking about something over there. We don't know yet. We'll figure that out next meeting. But most importantly, thank you, thank you, thank you all for coming tonight. Yes. I hope that we are more educated and I hope that we have a better understanding of our taxes. We'll see you again uh, for this same meeting with more information on April the 21st of this month, this year, six o'clock in council chambers. If there's nothing further, we'll go ahead and we'll close this meeting.